So your project looks like this. You just ran npx nuxi init, and now you have a blank canvas to go while Bob Ross on. It's nice having a clean slate, but what about all the tools you need? Things like linting, testing, SEO, and if I don't have you use, people will find out that I can't actually code. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the modules that I use on every Nux project and how I set them up. So I split them into three categories. Things I view as essential, modules that help me build with best practices, and then just things I like. The first essential is the Nux Tailwind module. If you're using Tailwind, it's a no-brainer. All you have to do is install it, and then you can start using Tailwind in your app. It adds a default configuration that accounts for Nux project structure, and you can customize your theme through a Tailwind config file, or even directly in your Nux config. But the feature that gives it that nice little extra drip is that it gives you a Tailwind viewer with the underscore Tailwind route, or it's even accessible in a tab in the dev tools. The next essential is one I guess y'all could have predicted, but the view use module. It auto imports view use in your app, and I'm not gonna say much more than that. If you like view, you'll love view use, so there you go. Next up, we got the Nux DS Lint module. This is relatively new coming out earlier this year, but it provides a lot of project aware and Nux specific defaults for ES Lint. This includes a lot of rules specific for Vue and Nux. So as soon as you add the module, we'll have ES Lint available in our project. It's also easy to customize. It's built for ESLint's new flat config format, and as soon as we run our project's dev command, this ESLint config file gets created. And now we can either append some flat configs, prepend some, or override specific rules. Overall, because of its good defaults, it makes working with ESLint inside of a Nux project a lot easier. The next thing I want to talk about is testing. I'm gonna be honest, for the longest time, testing your Nux 3 app kinda sucked, but that changed when the Nux test utils module came out. So once we install all the dependencies and add the module, this adds vtest to our app, allows us to run tests in a Nux environment and also has great end-to-end -end testing. And these last few points are crazy helpful. Running your test in a Nux environment means that before certain tests run, a global Nux app will get initialized. So if your app relies on Nux composables like use runtime config or even uses auto imports, which is Nux specific, this is how you can write your tests. I remember before this module came out and you either had to have explicit imports or have some sort of global mocks and it just got really messy and gave me an excuse not to test. But with this module, you don't really have to change the source code and things will just work. On a new project, Project, this is the code snippet that I like to try out first, where we set the vtest environment to nuxt, and then mount the default app.view, and expect it to contain welcome to nuxt. The module also supports end-to-end -end testing with vtest, jest, cucumber, and playwright as test runners. Testing your nux project could be its own really long video, but this module made it so much easier than it was before. Now let's see some of those modules where nuxt really flexes its magic. And those are the modules that make it super easy to follow best practices. Starting off with nux fonts. It's a zero config way to work with web fonts that makes them nicer to work with, and also reduces cumulative layout shift. Once we add this module, anytime we use a font family in our project, Nux fonts will load it from one of its providers. This makes it easy to switch between fonts from different providers like Google Fonts or Bunny. And also when we build our project, the font files will get downloaded. So your app won't have to make any external requests, which can improve the performance and privacy of your app. Also when using web fonts, there's a problem of cumulative layout shift. Before the web font loads, there'll be some sort of fallback font. And if that has a different size than your web font, the layout can shift. Under the hood, Nux font uses Fontaine and cap size to force the fallback font to be the same size as your web font, so when that switch happens, nothing in the layout changes. If you want to hear more about how all this works, Daniel Rowe goes over a lot of it in his latest vconf talk. The next module here is the Nux SEO module, and this module actually adds six other modules to your app that lets you follow the best SEO practices with minimal configuration. These are Nux Robots, which handles a robot's TXT and the meta tags. Nux sitemaps that help you build your sitemaps from pre-rendered and dynamic routes. Nux schema.org, which takes the content of your pages and this composable to generate structured data for your site. Nux link checker, which helps you identify broken link string development and can also scan your links when your project builds. Nux OG image, which lets you create dynamic OG images for your site using a view component. And finally, Nux SEO experiments, which contain some things like use SEO meta and also Nux.js inspired metadata files. You can either use all of these modules or disable whichever ones you don't want, but the Nux SEO module has everything you need to handle all those meta tags and fancy SEO stuff in your site. And the third tool I use to implement those best practices is Nux Scripts. I made a full video about it, but to sum it up, it lets you load third-party scripts with better performance, privacy, security, and DX. It lets you have more control over when third-party scripts load, like you can delay after the initial hydration or wait for user consent. It bundles third-party scripts during the build to improve loading times and minimize user data exposure. It has a script registry that has built-in composables and components for popular third-party scripts. I use it for Plausible, my analytics tool, and YouTube embeds, and it's nice to know that not only is it simple, 
simpler to use, but it also has great performance. And then the final category of modules I want to talk about are just things I like. These aren't necessarily things I think every project should have, but I use them all the time. The first one is Nux Icons, which gives you easy access to all the sets in Iconify. It has an icon component, we give it the name of an icon, and bam, icon go on screen. It also has support for custom SVGs and lets us have some control over how things bundle. We can bundle as dynamic chunks, serve them from a remote CDN, and for super commonly used icons in our app, we can even include them in the client bundle to avoid extra network requests. And then rapid fire through some of the other modules I like, there's auto animate, which lets you have good looking animations with a single directive, Nox color modes for setting up light and dark themes. And of course, as a content guy, I love Nox content. Some of the other tools on this list like Nux SEO have really good first party support for Nux content and things like setting up the meta tags will just work and have defaults since they're all built by the Nux team. So now that we've talked about all these really good modules, what's the best way to use them on all your projects? One way is to have a Nux layer that's shared across multiple projects that contains all of these shared modules. Or you could have some sort of script or alias that just NPX Nuxy module adds all of these. Or the third alternative is you can go to the dev tools and add them there. I think it would be cool if the NPX Nuxy init command could have a more interactive experience where common things like Tailwind, DS Lint, or Test Utils could be added through the CLI when your project gets created. I hope this list either gave you some validation on the tools you're using or gave you some ideas on tools you want to try in your project. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe for more content.